Welcome everybody to our second webinar on certifications. Um, thank you for arriving on time. Um, we'll just give everyone else a couple of minutes to join. Uh, I assume some people are probably finishing meetings and uh, etc. cetera, I need, need a little bit of time to join. So just while we wait, um, I think if I can ask two things from everybody, uh, the first one is um, feel free to, to post any, uh, to post in the chat you'll be able to see it down in the bottom right-hand uh, corner of the screen. Um, and I'd be super interested to hear who's with us today. So I can see the names of people, but I don't know necessarily what uh, your position is. So it'd be super interesting if you're willing to share your name, the company you call, you're, you're joining from uh, and your position. Um, and if there's anything you'd like to get out of today's session, any questions you have or anything you'd you know, like to make time for, um, please share in the in the chat. Um, one other thing you can do is that we also have a poll open. So if you go down to the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you'll see that I've set up a poll um, asking people to share their thoughts. Um, the question is how many, how, how much training do you think people forget after five days? 10%, 30%, 50% or 70%. Um, so please fill out the, the poll uh, while you're waiting and um, we can share the results uh, during the presentation. So we'll be able to see what everyone voted and I can share the actual numbers um, somewhere through the presentation. Um, so maybe we'll just give everyone a minute more to join. Uh, and if you could fill out that poll and post the questions in the chat in the meantime, that would be wonderful. So I, I can see we've got people dialing in from all over the world today. We have um, some people calling in from Europe, a couple from the US, uh, and I'm actually taking this call from Australia. Um, so we've got people in all different time zones all over the world, which is pretty cool. Um, quite late for me, very early for those in the US. So thanks for making the time to join. Um, great. Uh, any any questions? I see it doesn't look like uh, no one's posted in the chat or the poll yet. Um, but yeah, feel free if you have any questions, feel free to, to post them in there. Okay, we're at th three minutes past. Ten, to, we're at three minutes past, so I think we can get underway. And um, <clears throat> I thought I'd, I would start the session off today, maybe telling a story um, about how one of our customers used um, certifications in their organization. I think this will help. I think certifications is a bit of a vague word, uh, a little bit hard to understand. People have different definitions, but this will under help you to understand where we're coming from and how we define uh, certifications at Wonderway. So um, this client of ours, uh, they're a SaaS business, about a 200 person company with 60 person sales team. Um, and they were rolling out a, a brand new product. So they've been working on this product for about, I think it was about eight months, um, spent a hell of a lot of money and time building this product um, and launch day came and they, um, they did the training with the sales team. So um, the way that they did the training the same way that most sales teams do. Um, they called an all hands meeting for the sales team. Um, some people joined in person in the office, others joined in via Zoom. Uh, the product manager, the head, head of product and the head of sales jumped up and they did a presentation about this new product that they were launching. Um, and, you know, running through all of the nice features that they had, um, talking a bit about the background of why they built it. Um, and at the end of that hour long presentation, they had a Q and A. Um, so they asked some questions for people if anything was unclear and um, and basically no one really asked anything. Uh, everyone, they said, okay, is this clear? And everyone nodded their heads. Um, and then the message was go forth and sell. Uh, and probably doesn't take a genius to work out how successful that training was. Um, I think when we started working with them, it was about six months later and they hadn't sold a single one of these widgets that they'd released. Um, and when we spoke to the sales team, the, it was obvious what went wrong basically um, nobody felt comfortable with this product. They'd, they'd attended this training, um, but no one really got it at the time. They were uncomfortable to ask questions when there's 60 other people in the room. Um, and, you know, as a result, um, they went back to their desks and they sold the other products that they were comfortable with. Uh, the company had about five different, uh, five different products and everyone uh, just stuck with the training, with the, selling the products that they knew best um, and stayed in their comfort zone. You know, why would I take a risk selling this product when I don't really get it? When you know, I know that I can, I've got a process and I can close these other these other products when I try. Um, so 
when we started working with them, we decided to redo the training. Um, we didn't make, we didn't think any changes to the product were needed. They just needed to train the team better. Um, and what we did is we basically ran the same session they did um, six months ago, breaking it up into smaller chunks. So rather than having one hour presentation, we did a series of shorter, shorter presentations, documented everything, um, and then included a series of assessments afterwards. So there were some quizzes where people could, uh, we tested their understanding, whether they were paying attention, understood the content. Um, but then we had a series of exercises where they had to put the, the, the training into practice. So we actually asked them to um, identify a list of prospects that they were interested in, um, that they thought could be a good fit for the product. Uh, and then they had to create their own pitch for, the, for those customers um, and record that inside the product. So by doing this, um, finding some prospects, recording a pitch, getting feedback on the pitch, and then we set quick goals for them for you know how many customers they were supposed to reach out to after one week, um, two weeks, uh, a month, and three months. We had um, clear goals for, for how many prospects they were supposed to reach out to, how many conversations they were supposed to have, and how many deals they were supposed to close. And um, by taking this much more structured approach, uh, we saw a, a massive uptick. I think about three months in, we saw people starting to sell the product. And after 12 months, it actually became the most successful product in their portfolio. So um, I think it just goes to show that, like, you know, when you think about what's at stake here, with it, especially with something like a product release, this company had spent eight months building the product. They'd invest, invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in developer salaries building it. Um, and if it doesn't land the right way, it's basically just been a waste of your time. So it just shows how important it is. You know, I think what this sales manager and this product manager did um, was really just being a little bit lazy. They just assumed that they would get up there, do the presentation, explain it their own way, um, and then just assume that everyone would understand what had been said. Um, but it's really worth, you know, taking that extra step to to run the training properly and make sure that people have really understood it so that you make sure this thing lands. Um, Cool. I can see some people are active in the chat. Sorry, I missed that before. Oh, someone's joining in from Brazil. That's quite cool. So we do have people from all over the world. Um, but yeah, let me jump into the slides. Um, I'll share my screen. So hopefully this story just, I'll refer back to this a few times throughout the, the, the webinar. Um, but hopefully this helps to understand where we're coming up with, from with um, certifications. And, um, and uh yeah, and, and I think we'll be able to refer back to this a few times throughout, um, talking about where they went wrong. So um, in terms of the agenda, what I'd like to cover off first is um, just broadly, what is a certification and when should you use them? What are some common mistakes we see our, our, our customers um, doing when it comes to running certification trainings? Uh, I want to touch a little bit on the theory. Um, I won't spend too much time on it, but I think it's useful for everyone to understand what makes a great training and how we put that into practice, um, how you can put this into practice in your own trainings and, and how we do it at Wonderway. Um, so for the first section, what is a certification? We take a very broad um, definition to this. Uh, we see people using certifications for all sorts of different types of trainings. It could be process changes. It might be certain skills like pitching, cold calling, demos, um, or it could just be, um, it could be product releases, like I mentioned before, or, or process changes. But I think the key thing here is that we define a certification as um, a training that you're running um, where something needs to be remembered and it needs to be applied by the sales reps. Um, and this isn't all the trainings that you're gonna be running. I think there's plenty of um, examples of training that you might be running where, where it's not necessary to do a certification. So things like team updates, um, if it's just you know an FYI for the company on, on what's going on in the other teams, um, could also be knowledge sharing. Maybe one of the sales managers watched a YouTube video that they liked and they drop it in Slack. Um, you know, this sort of stuff doesn't need a certification if it's just an FYI and, and you know, you want people to, to share this. Um, you know, it's not worth the time in, in investing building a proper certification program. But for more important things like um, product releases that we talked about, pitches, um, demos, if you're changing the pitch, you're changing the cold calling script. Um, or another example that we had from a customer was, um, changing critical processes. So one of our customers, they had made a change in their sales force um, where they required all of their sales reps to put um, new fields in, into the, the sales force, into the deals that they were doing um, to be able to process the invoice. And if the sales reps didn't do this, they weren't able to send invoices to their, their customers. So it was literally costing them money if people weren't following this process. With things like this, you need to go beyond just like a quick update in, in Slack or, or, or a Zoom call. Um, and you really need to, um, as I mentioned before, you need to have confidence that people have um, 
remembered and understood the training and they're able to apply these things. Um, and this is where it makes sense to, to set up a proper certification. Um, so anything needs to be remembered and applied. And it's also great when you need to align things across the team. So if there's anything where you need everybody in the team um, speaking exactly the same way, following exactly the same process, that's when it makes sense to, to run a certification. So what are the, some of the common mistakes that we see when running these certifications? Um, um, many of them I already touched on before in the example, um, but I think that the number one mistake that we see people making is that they're running their training synchronously. Now, um, you know, I think there's, there's nothing wrong with doing the training synchronously, but I think um, if that's all you're doing, then um, there's a very good chance that people aren't going to remember this, this training. So if the only way you're conveying information is through a Zoom call or an all hands meeting or one on one with, with the person you're speaking to, um, there's a very good chance that they're not going to remember that information. Um, it, it, they're not going to remember that information afterwards. So I think if you're doing these trainings, um, if, especially if it's over Zoom, I'd always recommend um, just switching on the record button, making sure you, you're, you're recording it so you can share that um, recording with them afterwards so people have something to refer back to. Uh, the second thing is just assuming that message sent equals message received. Um, when this is uh, so often not the case, um, I, I actually just had an example of this, um, this this week with my team. We're changing something in our pitch. Uh, and and uh, last week in the account executive meeting, then I did a demo on how I expected people to pitch things. Um, and I thought when I had communicated to the reps, I thought it was very clear um, because in my head, it's, I've got a very clear story and it feels like everything, you know, I wrote the pitch. So, of course, it's, it, it seems very simple. Um, but then we set up a certification inside Wonderway and I sent it out to the team. And I've started getting through some of the answers this week, and I can see that people um, clearly didn't understand what I what I what the message that I was communicating. And you know, I, I think if you don't have a, a way of, of people, um, you know, putting things in their own words and 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 sort of testing them on this, there's no way that you're going to know. Um, and I, I think something a mistake that we see so often with our customers is that when they see that their sales reps aren't able to communicate back the message that they're expecting they they're very quick to blame the sales rep like it's their fault um so maybe they ran this training and they're like hey i just told you how to do this last week um why aren't you doing it this way and they assume it's the rep's fault rather than taking responsibility that maybe they hadn't communicated the message correctly themselves in the first place um so here in my case when i'm looking at my sales reps and and you know there's two out of three of them can't communicate that message it just shows that it's probably not their fault it's probably me because it's it, there's a pattern um, and it means that I need to go back and I need to revisit the way that I've done that training. Um, the third one is using quizzes. So uh, I think if probably the the best we see for, for for many of our customers in terms of training is that they might be doing, they might have documented the process. Um, they might be using an LMS to even assign things and set due dates. Um, but in most cases, the the most common way of testing people is through through a quiz. Um, and I think this is a, a great start, um, but this just doesn't go far enough in, in this will test, you know, whether people have uh, read the document, um, it might test like some high level understanding and a multiple choice, but you're not going deep enough on whether they're able to actually put this into their own words and put into practice. Um, so for things that are super important when you're running a proper certification, I really recommend that you take it the next step um, and ask people to do the actual pitch. Um, and, and again, that process of putting things in their own words is just so valuable for memory and making sure that they, they are able to action the training that you've given them. And then the last one is having no follow-up. So this really means um, like not having any clear goals. Um, so many companies who work with get lost in running training for the sake of training. Um, so you know, it comes up all the time in demos that we do where people are very focused on small features like um, being able to track things like like page views, um, quiz scores, how long somebody watched a video for. Um, these things just aren't that important in the scheme of things. Like the reason that you're running the training is to make sure that people are um, changing behavior and they're taking action off the back of it and, and hopefully that it's driving some sort of outcome. Um, and I think you know one of the key things you can do here to make sure that your training is more successful is, is communicating to people why that you're doing the training. What is the action you're expecting people to follow? Um, to take off the back of this training and then tracking whether people are actually taking that that action. Um, you know, getting too hung up on the details of, of quiz scores or page views is not, um, you, you're losing sight and you're much better off focusing on the outcome that you want to drive. Um, so, 
now I'm going to touch a little bit on the theory of what makes a good training. Um, I won't go into too much detail. I don't want to bore everyone. Uh, but um, I wanted to just check on the poll to see if everyone had voted. I'm not sure if anyone's voted on the poll or if I have just not, if I'm just not able to see it. This is the first time I've used the this software for the webinar. Um, were people, was everyone able to see the poll or is it not available to you? I could have made a mistake here. Someone respond in the chat. Oh, no, here it is. Okay, I see. So um, look at the poll results and I can see that um, the majority of people said that about 30% of um, people think that about 30% of the training is forgotten after five days. Some said 70%, some said 50, none said 10. Um, so I think six of you were right um, that it is actually 70% of training that's forgotten after five days. So um, it's crazy to think that if you're doing training with your, your sales reps, um, if the only way you're doing it right now is in person, um, you know, maybe communicating things in a, in a team meeting or one-on-one, -on -one, um, it's always good to remember as a team lead that, um, it's always good to remember as a team lead that, that you know, 70% of what you're communicating, is, they're not going to remember later. Um, and it's not their fault. This is just human nature. Um, and I think this is also something that we see from people. Uh, they, they, I hear sales managers saying this all the time. You know, I just told them last week, why can't they remember? You know, they must be dumb or this is so frustrating. And, and again, very quick to, to sort of blame, um, blame the sales reps. But, but if you keep this in mind when you're running training, then, then this is just um, how it is. And I think, you know, the, the key here is um, when you, when you, if there's something that's important, people need to remember this some certain principles that you need to apply to make sure these things stick. So um, the first one to keep in mind is that um, theory is actually kind of the, the least important part of the learning process. Um, so there's this 70-20-10 uh, model, which says that 10% of what we learn is actually through theory. So the stuff that we learn at school um, and 70% of it is coming through application. So um, if you really want something to stick, uh, if you really have some important training, just creating a training in an LMS or, or communicating in a, in a Zoom call um, is not really going to is not really going to drive the the behavior change. Not, people aren't going to remember it, and it's going to drive behavior change. Um, for people to to really remember things, we need to get people to apply what they've learned um, and give them feedback on what they've learned to make sure that they're able to constantly improve on it. Um, so this um, I think you know keeping this in mind that you know whenever you're running training it can even be something simple if you're sitting down with a sales rep um and you're doing a a, a cold call role play or, or something like that maybe you communicate the way that you want someone to to uh communicate the way you, what you want them to say and then ask them to relay it back to you so ask them to put it into their own words and give them feedback and this is just going to be so much more effective than just um standing up and presenting one-way communication uh, the other thing, I already touched on this before, but um, always thinking about um, what the purpose of the training is. So, um, you know, I think so many, uh, you know, L&D managers, sales and everyone people, um, you know, people that are creating training, um, they focus so much, I already mentioned this before, sort of training for the sake of training and getting stuck on the small details. Um, you know, when, when you're looking at how training is impacting behavior, you need to look at this. This is based on the Kirkpatrick model, um, which talks about, you know, these four different la layers of, of learning and behavior change. So the first thing we need to look at is did they attend the training? Did they understand the training? Um, did the behavior change? And did they actually, um, did we actually get a result out of it? Did it change the performance? Um, and, you know, most LMSs on the market, I think if you're doing your training in person, um, you're probably just looking at this layer. You can you can see who's in the room, see who dialed into Zoom call. You can probably you know very easily tell who attended. Um, but and if you're using LMS, maybe you can take it to the next step. So you can include a short quiz in in, in the training to see how well people have understood. Um, but there's very few um, companies out there that we speak to, and very few um, software products out there that take it to the next step to really see has it changed behavior and and what was the impact on performance. Um, and this is really what we're all about at Wonderway, um, trying to take it to the next level to, to not focus on quiz scores with page views, but actually look at, um, you know, real metrics in the sales team, like what were the conversion rates and how much money was, was being, um, how much more money did we make off the back of the training? Um, 
So how do we put this into practice? I, uh, I'll start by sharing a couple of tips um, that you can put into to any training. Um, and then I'll show you what um, the training looks like in, inside Wonderway. So I can actually show you an example of the, the training we built for this customer I mentioned at the start. Um, in terms of these basic tips, I think the most obvious one is just document it. If you're doing all your training in person, um, you know, you're basically wasting your time or you're wasting 70% of your time is being wasted. Um, you know, if you're doing it on Zoom, record those videos, um, document them, share them afterwards, write a, write a Notion doc, whatever it takes, but make sure you're creating some sort of um, record of the training that people are able to refer back to um, in a week or, or two weeks or, or a month's time so that when they forget things, they're able to come back to it. The second thing is just asking people to put things in their own words. Um, you know, having a short multiple choice quiz is, is just not enough. It's only testing 10% of the, the learning. Um, getting people to apply it, put things in their own words, getting people to practice their pitches, um, you know, show that they're able to make that process change inside Salesforce. It's just going to be so much more effective for the learning process and also give you much more confidence that they've understood it. Um, so maybe that's sort of combining two and three. The fourth one is tapping into intrinsic motivation. Um, most trainings that we see, most people we speak to that are, that are building trainings, they're always thinking about the stick. So, you know, when we have the way of motivating people to, to do the training, there's the carrot and the stick. Uh, and it's always about, um, you know, tracking people who attended the training, looking at their quiz scores, the page views, and then following people up and threatening them with, um, you know, threatening them with, with different things. Maybe they're going to get less bonus or whatever that might be if they don't complete the trainings. Um, as much as possible, I try to flip it on its head um, and really uh, communicate why you're doing the training. So make it clear that this isn't, that you know, how this can benefit them if they do this properly. I think in sales, it's very easy just to tie things back to, to revenue and, and, and their bonus. So explain that by doing this training, um, you know, if it's a new pitch, if they get this pitch right, they're going to be able to perform better on calls um, and hopefully close more deals and get paid more bonus. So just setting clear goals for what you're expecting out of the training um, explaining, you know, what they're going to get out of it if they hit these goals and then actually tracking people to make sure whether to, to see whether things have changed. Um, so I think that this is something, all of these things you can do on your own. Um, you could do it in your own um, without using a software product at all. I think where a software product like Wonderway comes in handy is that um, we can just help you to, to scale this. Um, so rather than doing training one-to-one, -one, um, it's much easier to then um, scale it across a bigger team and track the, the changes. So let me quickly show you my screen and I will, there we go. So now, um, hopefully you can all see my screen now. I'm showing, yes. Um, I'm showing um, this, what, what a certification would look like inside Wonderway. Um, so when when we go back to this example of the, the sales, um, the sales team that had this product release where they just did things on Zoom, um, when we rebuilt their training um, and we set it up in Wonderway, um, instead of them attending the Zoom call live, instead we, we chunked it up into some videos that people could watch. Um, so they could come in here, watch things at their own pace, um, and of course come back to them later if they forget something. Um, and then we added these assessments into the into the products, into the training. So um, basically we, we try to, introduce all three of these elements that we talked about, this um, theory application and, and coaching. Um, and the best way to test their understanding of the theory is just to have a short quiz. Um, so exactly what we said, like a lot of LMSs could do. Um, but then again, asking them to put things into practice. So what we would do then is ask them to actually identify some target customers um, that they, some target companies that would benefit from this new product that have to list them. So basically building a prospect list this forces them to think about, okay, now that I do, I, now that I understand the products and I understand the pains, who are some companies that I know of that might have these pains? And then um, we ask them to record a video of themselves doing the pitch. So choosing one of the companies from this list and recording themselves pitching the product um, to see if they're able to put this in their own words. And they basically load up a video of themselves doing the pitch and then the sales manager would be able to give them feedback on how well it worked um, and certify them on that pitch. Once they pass the certification, we then take it a, a step further by setting clear goals for, for the sales reps. So once they, we know that they're able to, to pitch, they know they understand the product, 
We set a goal where they're expected to set um, contact 10 prospects about the new product by the end of the week and pitch at least one prospect by the second week. Now, um, you can basically take this as far as you want. I think in their case, we actually set up goals for the first, second, and third month. Um, and we even asked them to to close a deal um, with a new product by the third month. Um, but you know, if you don't want to take things that far, at least ask them to pitch some customers and then collect feedback on their pitch. So, um, you know, did you what sort of feedback did you get on the product? Do you have any feedback on the sales process for the sales team of how we can improve um, moving forward? And I think by having these clear goals in here, you're already making. Um, again, we talk about this theory, application, and coaching. You've got the the content in the theory and in the quiz, the application in the pitch, um, the feedback on the pitch, and then taking it through to the behavioral level. So making sure that people are actually changing their behavior and we're able to track what the impact is on, on the business as a result. Um, so I just ran that through that very quickly because I can see we're running out of time. Um, but hopefully that gives you an understanding of uh, how we like to do things at Wonderway. Um, so... I'll finish up now so we have time for a couple of questions. Um, is there anything anyone would like to ask before we finish up in four minutes? Let's go to the chat. So how long does it take to set up a training certification in Wonderway, Richard's asking? Um, well, it's super quick. I mean, especially if you um, have the content. So if you've done the training via the Zoom call, um, just record that that video um, as you're doing the training. And I mean, setting up these quizzes um, takes a couple of minutes. Uh, so we also have templates inside the product that you can use for product releases, um, process changes. So you can follow those um, templates and it's, it's very, very quick to pull it together. And I can see which has also asked whether you can share answers that people are submitting. Um, yeah, this is also a good point. So um, we have a feature inside the product around the best practices. So if you imagine you assign this training to, um, you know, 60 people in the sales team, and there's one person in the team who does a particularly good pitch, um, what you can do inside Wonderway is actually mark this as a best practice, um, and it will share it across all the other reps in the team so they can see what good looks like. Um, I think this is a really... You know, it's social learning, everyone's learning from each other, but it's also a great way to recognize the people that are, are putting in the effort to, to really do um, to really do a good, good um, pitch in their training. Uh, any other questions from the, the group? So Alice is asking whether there's dashboards to show the overall training completion results and measurements. Um, yes, there is. Uh, I don't have this set up inside the demo account right now, but we have um, we have dashboards for the um, quiz scores, the, um, the uh, assessment, uh, the pitch assessments, and we also provide dashboards for the um, milestones that you've set. So um, if you want to see how many people actually you know, took action off the back of it, how many people did their pitches, how many people they called, um, how many how many demos they've generated, what the conversion rates are, we can set all of that up in the dashboards um, and we can connect it up to your, if you have a CRM, Salesforce or HubSpot, we can connect it up there and pull the data straight out there into the dashboards inside Wonderway. Let's see Alice is responding. So I'll give her a second. I can see you've asked, do we integrate with Zoho CRM? We don't currently integrate with Zoho CRM. Um, if you're interested in this, feel free to reach out. Um, we might be able to do this for you, Alice, but so far none of our customers are currently using the CRM system, so we haven't built it yet. And I think Shafali was asking something, but he's not. So, oh, so Shafali's asked, is there any support offered on the platform for those who are taking this certification course? Uh, yes, there is. So we have um, Intercom installed inside the product. Uh, so that's for the learners and also for the um, administrators. So, um, you know, our customer support teams there to answer any questions. Um, if the 
if, even if a learner gets stuck, they can write a question. If they don't understand something about the way the system works, they can reach directly out to our support team and, and we can help them through. Cool. Okay, well, we're out of time. Um, so if there's any other questions that come up, um, feel free to write me an email or uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn um, and you can ask me any other questions afterwards. I'll stick around for a couple more minutes so I can see Giovanna's. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, if anything else comes to mind, um, please feel free to reach out on LinkedIn and I can answer any questions. Um, and of course, we'll also circulate the, uh, we'll also circulate the, um, uh, I can see Nazar's popped something up on the screen. Uh, I can also, we'll circulate the recording from today's session um, and, and the slides. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll circulate that in the next few days. But thank you so much for joining. Really appreciate um, your time and your questions um, and, and feel free to get in touch if you're interested to learn more.